John O'Toole. And uh, I'd like to share with you an experience I had with replacing a motherboard on one of my PCs. Now this particular motherboard replacement was an re exact replacement of the one that was in there. Through my own stupidity <laughs> and that I failed to unplug the PC while replacing a video card. A definite no-no. You want to always ground yourself by touching the frame so that you're at the same potential as the chassis and you want to unplug it. Or you want to unplug it and touch the frame so that you don't have any uh, static jumps. Um, so this video is uh, is either going to be a one piece video for YouTube and um, or it is going to be in three pieces for TTSB. Now CTSB likes to have the, uh, the 30 minute segments because they're easier to move around the calendar and schedule. So if you happen to catch one or the other You'll have to look for the other uh, versions to find out how it all works out. <laughs> so, without any further ado, so some, some interesting things about this is if you're upgrading your motherboard uh, and you're going to keep most of your hardware that you have, um, with except maybe you were, if you're replacing the motherboard, you're going to have to put another CPU board, uh, CPU in it because it won't fit the the socket size, and you might have to change out the memory. But the basic procedure is all the same. Now, if you're changing out your motherboard to another version, this plate on the back is going to get swapped out to a different plate because rarely does two motherboards have the exact same configuration for your ports on the back. And every motherboard comes with one of these. If you're buying one on eBay, be sure it comes with one of these because to find this particular panel on a used motherboard is going to be a huge challenge. Now in this case, I was swapping out one for one so I didn't have to use this because the one that was installed in my case was the same one. But, generally speaking, if you buy a new, new motherboard, they're going to ship you a new panel. If you get a used board off of eBay or Craigslist or from a guy down the street, be sure you get this panel to go with it because otherwise you're just going to have a big hole around all your ports. It's not going to look pretty and it's going to affect your ventilation to some degree. Now the other thing that you have to keep in mind is that when you change hardware, in particular the motherboard, because the motherboard is where your MAC address is. And that MAC address on the motherboard is what tells Microsoft that you're, you've changed your hardware or you've changed your motherboard. When you change your motherboard, you're going to require a new license key for your Windows. Now, if you happen to be upgrading or replacing your motherboard or upgrading to a new motherboard, Microsoft gives the opportunity for you to swap over that license key to your new hardware. And they have a procedure for that. As long as you have a valid license key that you purchase legally, you can swap it over. There's a number of ways to do it, and it all depends on your version of your Microsoft. You can call them up, and they'll activate it. You could do it through uh, the system and there are procedures. You just go in and you click on activate and if you if you know you, you know you can stumble your way through it. <laughs> That's the best way to do it. You stumble your way. The ultimate, if nothing works, is you have to call Microsoft 
and they will help you through doing it over the phone. So, I hope you kind of enjoy this. If you're technically inclined, a lot of this will make sense. If you really don't know anything about computers and you're afraid of them, uh, maybe this is something you want to take on yourself. There's a great YouTube channel called Carrie Holtzman. I'll put it into the credit page. And he talks about doing computers in a, the most simplest way that you can really enjoy it. Some of it's technical. A lot of his stuff he talks about is for people who have never done this before. So take a lock watch on his channel as well as mine. And I hope you enjoy this fun little video. Ta-ta! This video, I'm going to replace the motherboard and I'm going to do a video of it. Just for the fun of it. And we will see how we do. And, uh, yeah. So I'm going to take out the old board and put in the new board. And every time I roll this around, I hear something moving. So I got a feeling there's a screw behind the motherboard, which might actually explain everything. So I am going to keep to talk to you as I go, I guess. Just to, uh, uh, first I'm going to take out the board. I have a video card and then I have a USB 3 card because it's just an older motherboard. It doesn't have any USB uh, 3 ports on it. And that's basically just for file transfers, of course. Just to kind of save some time. I have two um, storage drives, two terabyte storage drives for video. One's almost full, the other one is maybe half full. And then I have a 120 gigabyte uh, SSD that I have everything loaded on. So I press the clip for the video card and the video card comes out. Now this is the card that I got. Um, the guy had installed a uh, heat sink on it so that he didn't have to have the fan on it. Um, I don't remember uh, the model for this. I think the one that's going in is a 730. Might be a 510. But, uh, you see on the back, it has the S-Video, VGA, and DVI. And I had two monitors hooked up, one on the DVI and the other one on the, uh... Oh no, this was the one in the, in the room in there. And I saw I had a VGA connector on it. And then I plugged in my sound uh, on the regular, on the motherboard. So this is the USB 3 and it works pretty good. I, in order to install the, the new board on my other system, I had to take that out.
So we have a terabyte drive and then a 120 in a in a holder and then another terabyte drive. This thing also has a light in it, RGB light, which I don't really care much for. It does have a window in the case. So it has a switch on the back to turn it on and off. And I probably guessed it, I leave mine off. So the only left is the uh, The uh, SATA cables are her. Gonna have a tiny finger sometimes for some of these cables. Bowl of Marlin. And the rear fan. 
There we go. So move it for all that. So good. There you go. By the way, see this screwdriver. I've had this screwdriver for 20 years. Screwdrivers has a cap for storing bits. It uh, has some tape under it to hold it in place. It's of course it's the long one. It's a 12 inch screwdriver. And uh, yeah, you can't get them like this now. They only have a short one now. But you can still get them. I don't know what, how things are different. But I have another one that's the shorter one. The only problem I've had with these is that it splits. It'll split here if you if you try to use it as a pry bar. And uh, the cap cover wears out. And if you drop this just right, usually like this, the cover pops off open and all the bits fly everywhere. Just sharing. <laughs> now something I gotta check on this, which uh, when I built this computer, I didn't have the uh, knowledge from Gary, Col Gary Coleman's uh, YouTube channel. So I could very easily have a, uh, a stud sticking up on the back of the board when I was messing around with uh, trying to get the video card in that I um, I shorted the board Definitely don't have all the screws in. Now this is in a Corsair's cables cabinet. Doesn't have that pin that holds the board in place while you work. So of course the board just dropped. Oop, one more screw. Well, something just fell out.
nothing really jumps out at me. But I'm missing studs. Seven slots on this board. So I guess this would be a Rather ATX board on a micro. Cable tie. These are So it's four gigabytes PC three hundred and twenty eight. Turn the arrows in the direction of the counterclockwise.
you go. You can definitely uh, dry. Clean off the old stuff with some isopropylol. So you can grab the glove for the Gary Coleman method. I always agree. This one all looks the same. You get all these things you'll never use. Now everything gets driven off of the one plug. At the CPU. I was back in the same place the other one was. There you go. 
bloopers. How many times did I put my thumb on the top of that uh, CPU? Okay, so while that's drying, put in our our RAM. Drop it in, make sure you're lined up as a notch. See the notch? You want to make sure your notch is lined up because it's uneven. It won't fit, but... Two thumbs. Snap right in. Snap dead. Now I did blow them on board once because I didn't snap these in correctly. I added in uneven. I've had my fair share of blowing up computer parts. They take a little more than just a simple thumb push. You definitely want to make sure that they're in there. You want to make sure your lever is into the notch. So it looks like what was jiggling around in there in the case was the uh, was a cable tie. Because it could have just as easily been a screw. So I'm using a piece of tape on my finger. That, uh, do it. This stuff on you, it just becomes part of your life. Okay, so uh, but you have to have the uh, the label oriented. To line up with the board orientation because you know, everything has to line up properly.
always one that gives you a hard time. Oh, that's easier. And then... You fan. Okay. How are we doing there? We we'll lined up. Okay. So this would be easy to do it if I put it down flat. But what fun was that be? Carry su carry supporters. We don't do things the easy way. The annoying part. Screw the line up. Darn it. We got one.
five. Did I put a stud in? Not take it out. Three screws left for three boards. Twenty-seven minutes. Can we do it in twenty-seven minutes? Power connector with the extra four. actually do is I'm going to open up the uh, data connectors.
you. Back there. We'll have our two SATA connectors down here. How well you can see them. This is an advocate for great wiring. This board doesn't support really good wiring. case or there's really I guess there's a hole there but you can Cable management to look a little better, but I don't think it's going to happen. The other ones are solid, these bottom ones, so I guess I'll put them back in the bottom. Not a place for fat fingers. Oh. Under the board doesn't work either. Those upper two go in so easy. straight in, straight into the board. Best way to do it. And you know, that's idiotic. Fan.
Uh, it's a little annoying because it really, really does get in the way. Okay. Um. Power switch. Looks a little better, doesn't it? Well, I'm happy with this, but there's not a lot you can do. Power switch is on the red. Reset. That side, hard drive LED, Our LED minus well, why did I give it to you in two pins? Oh. So I'm going to install the new board with the the hope that I didn't blow out the board. I don't know what to do with that cable. One thing would be to just install it on the on the front. I 
and then our uh, USB. Power cable. Don't want to forget that. RGB. And uh, that's it. All parts are in. And actually, cables look pretty good out back. All right, so I just have to try it out. It's easier to try it out in the other room than try it out here. And then I'm, I'm going to have to talk to Microsoft about changing over the board. Uh, 
we're gonna have for causes trouble. So this one was dangling around inside, causing noise and with pizza cable tie. Alright, so I just have to try it out. It's easier to try it out in the other room than try it out here. And then I'm, I'm going to have to talk to Microsoft about changing over the board. See, we have uh, we have the window emblem. We got no beeping. Uh, my mouse is 20 feet away, <laughs> and the keyboard. Uh, gotta search for new hardware. I gotta find a driver. touch it right now. I'll let it do its thing. I don't want to disturb the apple cart. Come on. Somebody's gonna wee. This one doesn't require an extra power connector, and my uh, GT590 didn't require one either, the 1050i. I figured that one would require another, another power connector. I was a bit surprised that it didn't. You can see there on the, uh, oh man. Has an LED, has a, uh, a two digit troubleshooting. Which is kind of cool when you think about it. Many boards have that. So. And this one has a hundred and twenty five gig drive at it. It hasn't used very much of it. There we are. Isn't that pretty? Uh, if I was someplace hot like Arizona, I would think that was pretty. But with us having a major snowstorm coming our way this weekend, I don't think it's all that pretty. But at any rate, I wish everyone well and uh, ta-ta!